Hello, teacher. In this video, I'm going to talk about the characteristics of teaching and learning in ESP. First, I would like to start by mentioning what is ESP. It is an approach to language learning which is based on the learner needs. So we don't see ESP as a final product. Or we don't. We are not looking for as a, as a final product. In this case, uh, we are talking about an approach for learning a language. In ESP, we manage a student-centered approach. What does it mean? It means that the student is the basis of all the course because we always we always focus on the student's need. This is why we need the commitment to the student. We need the collaboration among a student and teacher so that the student can suggest their ideas and express their needs uh, that will be covered during the ESP course. Um, in the ESP course, the student uh, will develop skills and incorporate the skills. It means, this means that the student will have to know or will have to acquire a general background of English language use because in the ESP course, they will use the language more specifically according to their needs. And finally, we have to use educational technology. As we know, there is a plenty of applications and activities on the internet that we can use in order to help students um, learn another language. Next, we have the ESP teacher role. The teacher's role is as a design, designer, material provider, evaluator, researcher, and collaborator. A designer, the teacher is a designer because the teacher has to see what is the best way to create a lesson plan in which the teacher must include all the requirements from the student. Uh, of course, the teacher has to uh, be a material provider because the teacher has to choose wh what is the best option, what, which are the best materials in order to help the student practice the use of language and practice the topics they are learning in the specific field they are learning about. And then the teacher is an evaluator because the teacher must be constantly providing feedback and giving advice and following and keep keeping a track of the student's performance. The teacher is a researcher as well because of course the teacher has plenty of knowledge about the English grammar, grammar use and rules, vocabulary maybe, but when we have to teach um, an ESP course related to, I don't know, maybe a vocational field or occupational field, let's, to give you an example, if, you are, if we are teaching a student who wants to study a, degrees, a, bro, a degree, sorry, a degree abroad related to medicine. So we have to um, do some research about the medical topics, medical vocabulary, and everything related to medicine. So in this case, the teacher becomes a researcher. Now, we as teachers, we must know why the learner need to learn a foreign language. And this is why right now we have some characteristics of the ESP course. We have two classification, absolute characteristic and variable characteristics. In the absolute characteristics, we have that an ESP course is designed to meet a specific needs of learners. Then uh, in, a, in an ESP course, we make use of the essential method methodology and activities of disciplines. And finally, an ESP is centered on the language. We mean grammar, lexis, and register. When we talk about the variable character characteristics, we say that ESP may be related to or designed for a specific discipline. So, as I mentioned before, it can be for uh, English for business, occupational purposes, vocational, or among others. We must know that a general English course is totally different from an ESP course. This is why in ESP, we may use different methodology and we have to look for the best methodology for our students. That methodology that uh, will cover all the students' specific needs. And then we have that an ESP course is likely to be designed for adult learners. Why? Because if a student wants to study for working in a specific, a specific field, 
we're talking about adults because adults work. Or if, if a, a student wants to study a, a superior degree, of course, we're talking about adults. But uh, we can also have ESP courses for children. Finally, in an ESP course, um, students must have an intermediate or advanced level of English. Because, as I mentioned before, um, the students will learn a specific topics, a specific vocabulary. In fact, they will learn English deeply, right? So um, they should have a general background about basic grammar structures, basic vocabulary, in order to understand the the topics that are that are deeper, right? So this is all I can mention about the characteristics and the role of teachers and students in an ESP course. Thank you for your attention.